Hey, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today we're going to be smoking the beef tri-tip on the big green egg. I'm a huge fan of tri-tips because they're an excellent bang for your buck. I got this piece of meat for around nine bucks. Uh, they're really easy to smoke, uh, so let's get in the kitchen and get started. Now when it comes to beef tri-tip, I like to keep it simple with the prep work. Uh, I use a really good flaky salt, which you can see here. Uh, coat liberally all around and uh, I'll come in after this with some uh, black pepper and let it sit out for about 30-45 minutes to come up to room temperature if you're taking it out of the refrigerator. This salt and pepper rub will act as a dry brine for the meat and help draw moisture and tenderize the meat while it sits. Uh, you could actually dry brine it for a longer period of time, though I would have it in a refrigerator just to keep that internal temperature of the meat at a safe level. Now I typically use a coarse ground black pepper, uh, but the stores were limited as they have been recently and uh, went with what I had on hand. Now I'll let the tri-tip sit out for about 30, 45 minutes to come up to room temperature because I took it out of the fridge. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a rub on top of the salt and pepper now. Uh, I'm using Musket Powder Black Label, which is a fantastic coffee base rub for red meat and wild game. Uh, if you prefer something a little simpler, you could always just stick with the central style salt and pepper. Uh, but I found that this has been a really great rub with red meat, so I wanted to try it on this beef and it came out great. If y'all are interested in checking out musket powder, uh, I'll make sure to put a link in the description below on where you can buy some for yourself. When cooking barbecue, half the battle is always internal temperature, so I always make sure to use an internal temp probe. It's not necessary, but it's a heck of a lot easier. I'm using the Weber iMini, uh, but just about anything you can find should work, even an instant read thermometer if you want to just keep checking it. All right, well at this point we're prepped and ready to go, so let's grab the meat and head to the smoker. Now we'll be smoking the tricep on the big green egg today. Uh, I got the temperature up to 225, made sure it was locked and steady. Uh, it'll be smoking indirect with the plates that are legs set up uh, with a water pan. People get weird about water pans to use or not use. Uh, I definitely don't want to add to that argument, but it's something I've always done uh, and I seem to be happy with the results, so I'm just going to stick with it, but you're more than welcome not to use one. Now the tri-tip is on the egg. Uh, we're aiming for an internal temperature of about 120 and at 225, it should roughly be about an hour. It's been a little bit over an hour now. Internal temperature for the tri-tip has hit 120, so we're going to take it off and set it aside and let it rest uh, while we take the plate setter out as well as the water pan and open up all the vents so that we can get a really high internal temperature and get ready for a good sear. The vents have been open for about 15-20 minutes and internal temperature in the egg is now about 600-650. Uh, we're ready to put the tri-tip back on and sear both sides. When searing, I like to use the tongs to test the doneness of the meat. You can feel it firm up as it continues to cook over fire. Uh, we did cook it up to an internal temperature of 120, so it's already sitting at rare when you put it down to sear. So you want to be uh, conscious of the timing and really only stick to like one to maybe three minutes per side, uh, depending on how much the flames are really hitting it.
So at this point, uh, the crust looks good on both sides to me. And by testing the firmness of it, it seems like it's sitting close to medium rare. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and head to the kitchen for slicing. Something really important when slicing tri-tip is to make sure that you're cutting against the grain. Uh, the long skinny bit of the tri-tip that I'm slicing here almost always has the grain going straight down so you just cut across as you can see. Uh, but when you get a little bit closer up to the fatter bit of it, uh, you're going to want to turn it about 90 degrees uh, so you can continue to slice against the grain because the grains in the meat actually turn. Here's that 90 degree turn I just mentioned uh, so you can continue to cut against the grain. It really is important, especially with tri-tip for being such a typically tough meat, is it just really helps with the tenderness when you go to eating it. Uh, the way I typically tap, tackle the tri-tip uh, when I am slicing it up is I'll take that long skinny bit I cut first and make much thicker slices out of it for dinner. And then because usually there's just so much leftovers, I'll tackle the rest of it here and cut really, really thin slices so that we have uh, plenty of leftovers that we can use for sandwiches and other type of cooking. As you can see, the internal temperature probe was really clutch. Uh, the entire tri-tip came out with like a perfect medium rear. Uh, and it really helps knowing that you're pulling it out of the smoking process at 120 uh, before you go into the sear. Uh, because you know you have a lot of room to work with before it'll ever get overcooked. And you know that you're past that. This is just pretty much raw phase because it's at 120 already. As always, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate y'all's likes, your comments, and uh, please make sure to subscribe if you like what you see for uh, more great content to come. All right, take care.